Hey everyone, today I want to show you how I create my frameworks in Autodesk Sketchbook using the shape tools and the guide tools. Let's get going. So here's an example of one of the frameworks that I've created in Autodesk Sketchbook. This is what we're going to create today, something similar to this. I like to use these when I place them behind my designs. They give me a nice framework, they break up my blank page, and they make them fun to doodle in. So I'm going to show you how we create something similar to this. But first I'm going to take you back into the gallery and we'll get started from scratch. So when you open up Autodesk Sketchbook, it either opens you up in a previous document that you were working in, or in the initial, or if you've closed it down, it'll open you up in your gallery. So this is my gallery, and you can see I've got other designs here. But I want to create a new canvas. So down here is the plus sign. So I'm going to create new canvas, I'm going to choose new sketch, and it gives me some options here. So I can rotate the canvas the way that I want it. I want it to be in this direction. And I can also choose from one of the presets, and they have a variety of presets. I'm going to choose screen resolution, but I'm just going to go back and show you here that you can change these numbers manually. It brings up the keyboard so that you can do that. When I do designs that I want to print, say, or if I'm doing them on commission, I usually try to use 300 dpi and up, which I've mentioned in my other um, tutorials as well as in my classes, and you can work out what you need these pixels to be in uh, in depending on whether you want a 300 dpi, a 600 dpi, or whatever it is you're looking for. However, for today, we're going to go with a preset and just use this green resolution. So once I've chosen that, I'm going to choose Create, and I get my canvas. So now we have a nice blank canvas. I like to bring in my grids. You do not need to have grids to do this. I just always love having them in the background. They give me extra guidance when I'm creating my geometric shapes. So I brought in my grid from my photo album, I click done, I go in and lower the opacity right down because I don't want it to really stand out, I don't want it to distract from the drawing, I just want it there as a guide, and then I will lock it down and move it to the bottom of my layers. So this layer here is the one I'm going to work on. Um, I'm going to turn that off so that I can first show you what the shape guides and line tools are about. So we have our shape tools, which has a line, a circle, and a square. And we also over here have our guides. When it's blue, it means it's active. And when it's not, it's off. So if you want anything to be on, you need it to be blue. You can choose a few at the same time, like the symmetry and the shape tool can be chosen at the same time. Some tools will turn off other tools, like the paint can turns off the symmetry and the shape tool. So here, we're just going to show you how the shape tool works to start with. I'm going to show you the line. So you're just going to draw a line anywhere you want to put it. And it comes, it gives you this little dotted line to tell you where it's going to show up. When I release it, I get my line. So I can draw another one over here. And you can keep doing that. It's based on your, the width of your brush. So if you want your brush to be thicker, you can get thicker lines. And if you want it to be really thin, you can get much thinner lines. So that is how the line tool works, very handy. The circle, or oval as they call it, because it creates an oval, it draws from the corner, not from the center. So anywhere I place it, I have my dotted area and it creates the line. So I can do that. Now if I want to change my brush, let's say I want to use the dotted brush, I can create a dotted circle line. So I can make that thicker if I want to. And the square, get rid of those, is the same idea, it draws from the corner. And you can make it a rectangle, a square, whatever you want. Same with the dots, you can create, um, depending on what brush you have, if I go into maybe a brush like that. It's more of solid, but you can play around with the brushes, you can get different looks that way. So we'll go back to my normal brush, and we'll get rid of those. So that is the line, circle, and square. The line is the one we're going to be using the most. And now we're going to go into the guides. So into guides turns blue. The first one I'm going to show you is the ruler. And anywhere you place this ruler, you can move it up and down and you can rotate it with two fingers. And if you double tap, it'll go back to center. So if I move it up here and then I d double tap the ruler, it'll come back to center. So that's a handy thing. And it will draw 
on the guide. So you can draw on either side of the guide. And the nice thing with the guide, you can line that up and I can have perfectly parallel lines spaced evenly. The nice thing with the guide is it will only let you draw on the guide. So see, even though I'm trying to draw down here, nothing, it only draw in that area on the guide itself. So the guides are handy, kind of mistake proof there. And again, you can use the dots and you get a perfectly straight dotted line. So let's get rid of that ruler and I'm going to show you the ellipse tool because this is the one that I use the most. So the ellipse tool, you can rotate it. You can make it bigger and smaller with this one. Up here, you can stretch it or condense it down. And if you double tap on this one, it makes it into a perfect circle, which you can make bigger, smaller, and you can pinch as well and rotate. It has a little black center so that you can line it up so when I have my grid open, I can line that black center up to know exactly where the center of my circle is. And again, I can draw around the outside. So that's the dots and see I overlap them there. But let's go back to just drawing a normal line. So there is a circle there and you can just move it around, make it smaller if I want. I can make my line thicker. And I'm also, the nice thing with the guides is I'm using a pressure sensitive brush and that's showing up here. The line isn't perfectly even all the way around. So it gives me that look of, of a true drawing, a hand drawing. I can use a different brush, which is not pressure sensitive. And then I will have a perfectly even line all the way around. So that is how I use the ellipse guide as well. So now that you're familiar with the guides and the shape tools, I'm going to show you how, how to use them in symmetry. So just before we get to that, I'm just going to cover a few little things that I've covered in other classes, but very quickly here, this little guy up here, this lets me choose my color and it also lets me choose the eraser function for that brush, which is really handy and quick. I can move my pencil oops, from side to side, starting in that center, and I can get the size of my brush to change and up and down will change my opacity. Let's go back to hundred and go back to a different brush here. And I also want to show you in the preferences over here, the preferences right here, let you pick some quick menu items. So I have a three finger swipe menu on. I can three fingers to the left will do an undo and three fingers to the right will give me a redo. And I also have my double tap corner shortcuts on up here in the top left. I have undo double tap to get that. And in the top, top, sorry, that's top right, top left, I have the redo. So this, in this preference section, you can set up some little quick shortcuts. So those are handy because when I'm drawing, I like to go into full screen, which is right here. So my full screen gets rid of all those toolbars and I can move my little brush over here. I still have my brush sizes as well over here, as well as the opacity. So that's very handy. Okay, so now let's do something interesting. I guess I undid that one. So we're going to be on our drawing layer and I want my symmetry to turn on and I need it to be rotational. And I'm gonna set it up for about an eight because I chose the grid size I chose was a 16 division. So with these grids, if you wanna make your own grid, I do have a video on that, how to make them in graphic on the iPad. I'll put the link below in the description. Or if you want to, I have sets of them available on my website. You can check those out as well. So we're setting up our symmetry here. This little guy here lets you either drive, draw past the uh, lines or ends stroke, stop strokes at center line, it's called. So I don't want to stop, so I like to keep them extending past the center lines. I will lock down my grid, and I'll show you if you don't lock it and you try to draw, your grid will move. This is handy if you want to draw somewhere else on your canvas and draw a bunch of little symmetry items. But if you want it in the center and you've moved it by mistake, well, that'll mess up your drawing. So the way to get it back is you double tap on it and it goes straight back to center. Then you can lock it down and it stays there. Uh, you can leave the visible or invis uh, invisible. So if I click on that, the grid disappears. I have my own grid, so it's kind of handy, but if I didn't have my grid, I can leave that one on, but for now, we'll leave them both on. And I'm gonna go ahead up into my drawing layer. So I have my symmetry set up, 
and I'm going to start with my shape tool. So these are both, this is blue and this is outlined in blue. It means both of these are active. When you have your shape tool on, make sure you choose the line. That's the one that I want to work with. And now we're going to go into full screen and I'm going to show you how with a line, we are going to create a symmetrical shape. So from this point down to this point and then release it and I get a beautiful symmetrical star. So I want to do another one inside, but I'm going to make the line a little smaller. So we're going to have a thinner line and we're going to draw from here to let's say here. And then I get a second one in the center. So that's how you use the shape tool, the line tool to create a framework, a nice geometric shape. Now let's go back and I'm going to show you how to use the guide. So turn off the shape tool. So now it's no longer blue. I know it's not functioning and turn on your guide. I'm going to use the ellipse guide. That's the one I like to use. And I can, I think I can turn it off, turn off those toolbars by going into my full screen. And now I'm going to use this ellipse tool and I can place it where I want. So I've got the little black dot to line up my center and I can line it up with the horizontal. Now I actually want it to be a little bigger. So I'm just going to a little bigger. And again, I'm going to line it up and now I'm going to draw and it, symmetry is active. So it draws the same circle all the way around and gives me a beautiful design. So now I want to draw a little circle inside that so I can pinch it down and it will stay perfectly in the center. And again, I can draw a second circle. So you get a little more detail to your framework. Now let's say I didn't want this bottom part. Maybe I only want half of that. So let's try double tapping this top corner for our undo. You have to do there. Two taps, I was doing three. So two taps will get my undo active. And let's say I'm just gonna draw from this line to here. The wonderful thing about the guides is they just let you use them like rulers to only draw where you wanna draw. So let's say I go over my line there. So that's perfect, that's what I wanted to do. But now I'm gonna go back in and leaving symmetry on, I'm gonna turn off my guide. I'm gonna go into my brush and choose my eraser. And now I can just get rid of that. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and I'm just going to erase that line back to there. And you can see it did it all the way around because I kept the symmetry on. So there is my symmetrical shape using Autodesk sketchbook. And I can take this framework many different places. So what are we going to do now that we have the framework? How do we get it out of here? Well, first of all, we can draw in Autodesk sketchbook which is another thing I love to do. So I create the framework. I go into the framework and I'm going to lower the opacity and lock it down. And then I can draw up here so I can keep the grid on. I can turn the grid off and then I can doodle into my framework using the symmetry function. Or if I'd rather use it in a different app, I can go up into this left corner, hit that little icon, go down into share, and in the share, I can save the image to my camera roll. And from there, I can bring it into other apps. I can go directly into other apps. Some of the apps work better with this ability than others, but you can try it out. But here I could put it right into Procreate and it would open up in there for me to use. Or the other option is I can copy it, which it would copy it to my clipboard, which works in other apps as well, some of them. Or I can print it. I do this quite often. I'll make the frameworks on the iPad, print them out, and then I'll place them behind my blank sheet of paper and I will use my pencil or my pens and I'll just doodle into them. So that's another way that I use these frameworks. So lots of things you can do. And now you know how to use the guides and you know how to use the shape tools in Autodesk Sketchbook. And you can go ahead and make your own beautiful frameworks and wonderful geometric symmetrical shapes and designs. Thanks so much for joining me in this class and we'll see you next time.